Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, August 8th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from San Antonio, Texas. A new denial of service vulnerability against the most recent Linux kernel has made the news sort of big time today in part because of the catchy name associated with this vulnerability. Segment smack as the vulnerability has been branded is an issue with the 4.9 Linux kernel. Now, before you look at your system and find out that you're not running the 4.9 kernel, be aware that some distributions like, for example, Red Hat have ported back the TCP stack from 4.9 into their version of the Linux kernel. So even though it doesn't say 4.9, you are using the vulnerable code. So for example, Red Hat Enterprise 6 and 7 are vulnerable. SUSE 15 is vulnerable as well as Ubuntu 18.04, which was just released. Patches should be out by now for vulnerable systems. So what's the risk here and what's the problem really? The risk, first of all, is if you have an exposed server, an attacker could connect to that server and by sending very few packets, essentially lead to a denial of service condition. The exact nature of the vulnerability isn't known yet, but it is related to the out of order queue, which essentially is where TCP keeps sort of random packets around that don't fit yet into a sampled TCP stream. Now, best guess here is that probably this attack involves sending a lot of out of order packets maybe also overlapping segments. So anything along these lines is probably to blame for this vulnerability. But again, the attacker cannot spoof their IP address because they first need an established TCP connection. And then they at least occasionally need to send additional packets. So again, this cannot be spoofed. At this point, I wouldn't really worry about it too much. There are probably more efficient ways to DDoS a server using spoofed IP addresses. No proof of concept exploit has been released at this point. One of the major hurdles that any new certificate authority has to overcome is that it has to be trusted by browsers. Well, and that really means it has to be trusted by the large major root programs that do add these root certificates to various software like operating systems and browsers. Let's Encrypt is sort of the latest large certificate authority that has gotten, gotten wide approval now up to now, that was often based on Ident Trust. Ident Trust is an existing trusted set of authority, and they essentially signed the Let's Encrypt signing certificate. Now, this is about to change as of today. Microsoft, the last large root program, is trusting Let's Encrypt directly. And with that, this intermediary Ident Trust is no longer required. In practical terms, this isn't really going to change much. Uh, you won't see any difference in your browsers or so if you go to a website that does use a Let's Encrypt certificate. Makes things probably a little bit easier, possibly cheaper for Let's Encrypt. They're still going to continue to have this cross-signing with Ident Trust for the foreseeable future because of course it will take time for older operating systems or so to either be upgraded or be phased out. And Google released its monthly update for Android. So if you can patch update to the latest version, one of the vulnerabilities being addressed here allows malicious software to bypass some of the requirements to actually ask for permission in order to gain privileges. Another vulnerability being addressed would allow an, a remote attacker using a specially crafted file to execute arbitrary code within a privileged process. So nothing earth shattering here, but certainly something that you probably want to get ahead of before it's being actively exploited. 
And OpenEMR is the most popular open source health record management system and it has a rich vulnerability history. A recent audit done by a number of researchers found yet again a number of SQL injection flaws, remote code execution flaws, a bypass of the portal authentication and well, probably not all that important in this list, some cross-site request forging vulnerabilities. This is in particular of interest, of course, for anybody who is working in healthcare to make sure that if you are running this software, that you keep this updated as soon as possible. Quite a bit of details released on these vulnerabilities, and of course, many of them are not that terribly difficult to exploit. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.